don't know what I would have done if ice cream were not invented. I just wonder. <laughs> Let them eat ice cream. That's the takeaway line from that attack ad by Donald Trump's campaign on Nancy Pelosi. And while my channel is in no way a pro-Trump channel, it's an anti-Trump channel, you give credit where credit is due. That's a devastating attack ad on Nancy Pelosi and other elite Democrats like her. Let's be 100% real. It captures all the stereotypes a lot of voters have about Nancy Pelosi and those like her. That they're elite, that they're out of touch, that their care for working class people is disingenuous and performative. And at the end of the day, while regular folks suffer, they eat gourmet ice cream from their luxury fridges and their luxury kitchens. That's really going to hit hard. Let's watch the whole ad and then we'll break it down further. We turn now to that $350 billion fund to help small businesses and its workers get through the shutdown. It will be up to Congress to restock it. But Democrats blocking that move this morning. They asked for a quarter of a trillion dollars in 48 hours. I said, well, I don't, I don't think so. They objected and I congratulate the Senate Democrats. Speaker Pelosi, what are you going to share with us from your home? Chocolate candy. Thousands have been forced to wait for hours at food banks all across the country. This is... Oh my. Chocolate, and then we have some other chocolate here. We just got to restock the ice cream. You don't want to eat up everything all at one time. I can't do it much longer. I'm trying so hard. We were, can we say, enjoying. Having to admit that, yeah, we're, we're starving, and... I like it better than anything else. Taping this segment, there are 22 million people out of work. This specific program <laughs> is about stopping job losses today. This is hurting people bad. Other people in our family go for some other flavors, but... Right now, it's survival mode. You don't know where that next something else going to come from. I don't know what I would have done if ice cream were not invented. I just wonder. <laughs> <laughs> So you can see it. The ad is fantastic at juxtaposing the struggles that regular folks, that working class people, that small business owners, that the poor are going through, not knowing about their future, businesses closing down, jobs being lost, maybe temporarily, maybe indefinitely, people not getting the aid they need. And then you have Nancy Pelosi talking about her fridge talking about her piles and piles of gourmet fancy ice cream, saying, I don't know how I would survive without ice cream, with that really, really awful laugh. And then it ends with the whole juxtaposing Nancy Pelosi to Marie Antoinette back in, you know, pre-revolutionary France. It's a brilliant ad. Now, I want to underline that a lot of it is BS. I think it's 100% accurate to go at Pelosi here because it was her crazy decision to go on late night TV and basically joke around about how rich she is, about how much nice ice cream she has, about how rich people problems are that, you know, she might not have ice cream. And my goodness, what would I do without my fancy ice cream? While people are literally not sure where their next meal is going to come from during this crisis. But to suggest the Republicans are any better is total, total BS because it's Donald Trump and his party primarily that have put forward an aid package that actually leaves the most vulnerable behind, that only offers them $1,200 at best, while companies, while the wealthy get millions and millions, if not more dollars to basically pad their bottom line. Working class people, middle class people, poor people are being left behind by the Republican Party most of all. But Ads are not reality, and they're never intended to be. Ads are about emotion. Ads are about creating narratives and sustaining narratives and perpetuating narratives. And this ad does that wonderfully. This ad basically takes the image of Nancy Pelosi, very wealthy, very downtown elite, very coastal elite, very much, I don't care about middle America, very much, I think I'm better than regular working class folks in Michigan, and turns it up to 11 with the fancy ice cream juxtaposed to the suffering working class people. And it doesn't matter that Donald Trump lives in a solid gold apartment in New York. None of that matters. What matters is for working class people in swing districts, 
This is going to turn them off. And they're going to see in Nancy Pelosi their enemy, not their ally. And to be fair, I think Nancy Pelosi is an enemy as well as Donald Trump. But if the goal for the Democrats in this election is to portray a progressive image, these sorts of attacks are going to be effective. And Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats have no one to blame but themselves because this was set up again. Going on one of these late night shows, bragging about your fancy ice cream is such an own goal in this context. It's out of touch at the best of times, but during a global economic crisis, it's especially out of touch. So the Democrats need to step their game up. They need to make sure that if they want to authentically represent working class people, that their officials don't portray themselves as the out of touch elites they often are. And as I noted earlier today, there's an opportunity to end Nancy Pelosi and replace her with a genuine progressive who lives a regular working class life, or at least much more authentically than Nancy Pelosi lives a working class life. And that's Shahid Buttar, who's running on a Green New Deal, Medicare for all, workers' rights, fighting for fundamental justice for regular folks. Democrats don't need to have someone like Nancy Pelosi constantly making them look like out-of-touch elitist downtown folks that don't give a crap about regular middle Americans. They can have somebody progressive representing them. And this is just one of the things, guys, that makes me really worried about Biden's chances in November. I know this isn't about Joe Biden directly at all, but anything about Nancy Pelosi will be tied to the presidential nominee from the Democratic Party because she's effectively the leader of the Democrats in the House of Representatives. Her errors will have consequences at every level for the Democrats. They need to straighten up. They need to embrace authentic working class politics. They need to abandon their coastal elitism and their assertion that their million dollar lifestyles are something that they can use to relate to regular folks and actually get down to the progressive politics people want. I don't know if they can do it. I don't know if these millionaire Democrats will ever actually side with working class people because to do so means they would have to fight their own self-interest, fight for Medicare for all, a Green New Deal, wealth taxes, all of which would affect them. Nancy Pelosi would pay handsomely if those policies were enacted. But unlike Republicans, they don't get to get away with disingenuousness when it comes to class politics. It's unfair, but for whatever reason, Donald Trump, the gold-plated billionaire, can pretend he's a working class person. Nancy Pelosi doesn't have that luxury. The Democrats want to win. They need to realize that now or they're going to lose in November.